Coming up on Ag Week TV, USDA announces payment details of the second coronavirus food assistance program. We'll examine the challenge of finding enough on-farm help. The North Dakota beef industry gives back to health care workers. And is the ag economy better off after four years of the Trump administration's policies, including trade? Welcome to Ag Week TV. I'm Michelle Rook. USDA announced details of the Coronavirus Food Assistance Program, or CFAP2, with up to an additional $14 billion coming from the Commodity Credit Corporation, which looks like Congress will replenish. Sign up began September 21st and runs through December 11th. Grain payments are figured on losses of about 5% on eligible acres times $15 an acre, or the acres are multiplied by a set market percentage times a crop payment times a producer's APH or actual production history. For corn, that equals 23 cents per bushel, soybeans 31 cents, wheat at 39 cents. Livestock payments are calculated on inventory owned between April 16th and August 31st, with rates at $55 per head for cattle, $23 for hogs, and $27 for sheep. And milk payments are based on actual production from April 1st to August 31st times $1.20 per hundredweight. For the balance of the year, they will be estimated on the average daily production for that period. Contact your FSA office for details. Farm groups welcomed the CFAP2 announcement, and leaders say it will help keep some farmers and ranchers in business. That's especially true of livestock producers who were the hardest hit with disruptions in the meat processing sector. We don't want it to look like we're just totally dependent upon the government to keep living, but in these really tough times and until the markets come back, um, it'll keep people in business, literally. And we certainly don't want to lose any more family farmers in this country. He says even though grain prices have improved from COVID lows on recent China buying, many prices are still under break even, and so the CFAP payments are essential. The World Trade Organization has declared the Trump administration's tariffs on Chinese goods totaling $234 billion illegal. They ruled against the U.S. argument that China has engaged in practices harmful to U.S. interests, like intellectual property theft and technology transfer. Plus, the tariffs only apply to products from China. The decision allows China to impose retaliatory tariffs on billions worth of U.S. goods. However, the U.S. can appeal, a process that can take months, so it may not have an impact on the phase one deal or China's robust buying of U.S. corn, wheat, pork, and soybeans. You can lose a WTO in grains and they may retaliate against you in something totally different, airplanes, whatever. Uh, you don't have to follow the line that you lost it in. Uh, we've seen that before with Brazil. So um, I think they're going to continue to buy the soybeans. Plus, the WTO's dispute settlement body is no longer functioning as the Trump administration has blocked the appointment of new judges. That's frozen any decisions on WTO appeals. After an already challenging growing season in the northwestern Corn Belt, farmers got hit with another problem, early frost. Temperatures in the mid-20s to lower 30s for consecutive mornings hit some of the immature corn and soybean crop. Farmers are still assessing damage and it varies, but it did trim soybean yields and could hurt quality. We're looking at, on my farm and then some of my neighbors' farms, we're looking at uh, a reduction in bean size and, and test weight, somewhere between uh, 20 to 35 percent yield reduction. He says test weights on corn will also be lighter, with an estimated 5 to 10 percent yield loss. Frost damage also occurred on dry edible beans in the northern Red River Valley. This week's crop stop takes us to Fisher, Minnesota, where temperatures dipped into the high 20s in mid-September. Todd Sorensen and several family members run JTS Farms. They grow a significant amount of navy beans. Sorensen says too much rain early in the season resulted in water damage to the beans. Then they were hit by frost, but he says it's too early to tell how bad the damage is. We put them in a bin with the idea that the damage will become more obvious, darken the bean more, and then the, the receiving station's electronic eyes can sort out the damage. The edible bean yields in that area range from about 1,800 to 3,000 pounds per acre. Sorensen says his yields were somewhere in between. The wheat harvest is wrapped up in South Dakota, and it was a record-setting year for winter wheat producers. 
Acres were down in the state again in 2020 with a wet fall and prevented plant issues carrying over from 2019. However, record yields more than made up for that. The acres that were put in produced phenomenally. We took a state uh, hard red winter wheat average from 52 bushels per acre to 60, and uh, we had the protein besides. He says they hope to see an increase in winter wheat acres planted this fall due to the success of the 2020 crop. Spring wheat production wasn't as strong as winter, but still better than 2019. We did have a little increase in acres. We did have an increase in bushels per acre, 45 bushels. And, uh, but again, good wheat, good protein, disease-free, it stood strong. Spring wheat production was a near disaster in 2019 in the Dakotas, primarily due to prevented plant acres and low falling numbers. The ag labor shortage has moved into crisis mode, especially during the pandemic. And despite agriculture being an essential industry, there have been delays in getting visas for foreign workers. The question of how to attract and keep good workers also has no easy answers. Jonathan Knutson takes a closer look in our Ag Week cover story. Finding enough on-farm help is a major challenge in modern ag. Brian Kenner understands those challenges firsthand. Kenner farms and runs a seed business in central North Dakota. He has four full-time employees, two in each business, but they need to be flexible. He's had good luck until recently in finding and retaining employees. In the last year, we've, we've had some struggles. I mean, it's difficult to, to find qualified people that want to um, do this type of work anymore. Brock Georgeson has worked for Kenner since 2004. The one thing I told Brian when I first started was, as long as you never yell at me, we're, we're good. Kenner has kept that promise, and their working relationship is good. Over time, farms have gotten bigger, rural populations have declined, and farm families have gotten smaller. That makes hired employees more important and more difficult to find. And a higher level of skill is needed too. You know, the days of just throwing anybody in a combine are kind of gone because of the GPS, all the technology, one wrong thing, you know, and it gets expensive in a hurry. Kenner says he won't ask employees to do anything he wouldn't do himself. He tries to be flexible to attract and retain good workers. We take a lot of time off for family events, things like that when it works, but when it's harvest time or springtime, we put in some long days and back-to-back -back days, and that's just, that's just part of the work. And I think the biggest struggle is finding people that are willing to accept that kind of lifestyle. Kenner says competitive wages and benefits, along with a good working environment, help to keep loyal employees. Near Maddock, North Dakota, this is Jonathan Knudsen for Egg Week. You can read more in Ag Week magazine and at agweek.com. How's the state of the ag economy in wake of a trade war and pandemic? Up next on Ag Week TV, we'll ask the experts. Advanced Grain Handling is your regional dealer for grain handler dryers, bins, and accessories. With Grain Handler's continuous mixed flow drying systems, you're capable of high levels of grain dryer efficiency on all types of grain, including seed grain. Advanced Grain Handling also carries West Steel's quality stainless steel products for on-farm and commercial grain storage solutions. Advanced Grain Handling has licensed and trained service techs and a licensed electrical shop. Get a hold of Chad Kylo to find the perfect solution for your farm. When you think about it, productivity starts at planting. So it's time to rethink how productive your planter can be. We did with the new Case IH 2000 Series Early Riser Planter. We rethought your row unit so it's tougher, more accurate. We rethought your meter, took the most precise technology, factory installed it. We rethought every inch of the Case IH Early Riser Planter to make it the most productive planter around. And if you think about it, that's exactly what you want. This is Dennis Belisky reminding you, we do auctions and we do them well. You've built your operation with hard work and when it's time to sell, all or part, you deserve the best. Details from repairs and preparation to promotion and settlements are not routine. Chances are you'll only do this once, so we'll tailor an auction just for you and get it done right. On site at your farm or added to one of our highly successful Alaris Center auctions, we have the skill, reputation, and integrity to meet your needs with best-in-class commitment and quality service. Find us at resourceauction.com or call 701-757-4015. At Superior Grain Equipment, we're committed to quality and service, offering you the best in grain storage and dryers for any size operation. Our experts will work with you to determine the most efficient and economical storage solution for your needs. We help protect your bottom line and your future. 
with the industry's best bins and warranties. Make the superior choice for protection today and tomorrow with Superior Grain Equipment. For Ag Week, this is Mikkel Pates at Watertown, South Dakota. We'll look at the positive impacts that dairy can have on the community. A Minnesota couple has put a grain bin to a new use. Spoiler alert, it's not grain. This elaborate system of tubing with the downhill slope is how Maplewood State Park gathers sap to make syrup. Thanks for joining us for this week's edition of Ag Week TV. Remember, for all your ag news, go to agweek.com or follow us on Facebook and Twitter as well. Welcome back. The trade war with China and the resulting MFP payments have had a big impact on agriculture, especially in the Northern Plains. Mikkel Pate sat down with two ag economists to get their thoughts on whether farmers are better off now or before President Trump took office. What uh, would be the economic difference for farmers between uh, the late Obama administration and now the late Trump administration? The biggest shift has been in where the revenues have come from. So prior to the trade war, uh, the vast majority of uh, farmers' net income, when we're, especially when looking at gross sales, came from the marketplace. They produced the crop, they sold the crop, profit margins were strong enough, prices were high enough, but it's not as large a portion as it used to be. A lot of our net income now is coming from these ad hoc or temporary uh, financial emergency programs. So we've seen a major shift in that regard. Over the last few years, has what rough percentage would it be uh, from yield and prices versus other programs that are more traditional? I looked at 2019's numbers not all that long ago. If you look at it from the standpoint of net revenue, okay, uh, the ad hoc programs in some cases, over 100% of net income came from the ad hoc programs. In other words, they would have had negative income had it not been for the ad hoc program, the MF, the second MFP that came out in 2019. One of the things that farmers talk about uh, to me is the benefit of having pursued these trade uh, policies and wars. There's no question that, that agriculture, and in particular Northern Plains agriculture, has been hurt because short term because of the trade war. This was all basically started uh, not as an ag issue at all. And as we had discussed and mentioned, you know, if, if, if agriculture was the key player in this whole trade dispute, I believe, in my opinion, it would have been resolved a long time ago or never actually become a problem in the first place. The reason we got into the trade war with China was because of a lot of other other issues, intellectual property rights, our ability of U.S. companies to do business in China. So it's a little bit early to say is the long-term benefit worth the short-term pain. The question of the impact of all of this uh, trade disruption is uh, in part the long-term effects of it and the effect of becoming, as they say, the residual supplier. This region, it, because of our location and the kinds of crops we grow in particular, has, has been a major supplier to China. And when we say U.S. has is, is probably become a residual supplier, what that really means is we're not necessarily the first phone call China makes anymore if they need product. To view the full interview, go to agweek.com. High-ranking EPA officials joined the annual e-tour hosted by the North Dakota Grain Growers Association. Greg Sopkin is based in the EPA's Denver office. He heads Region 8, which covers eight states, including the Dakotas. He says it's important to get out and see how their decisions affect farmers. And Michael Howe, who hosted the tour at his farm near Castleton, North Dakota, agrees. We cannot understand fully the importance of our regulations if we don't see in person how these farms are operating how they're applying the fertilizer, the pesticides, everything they need to have a successful operation. That, that's really kind of our main goal, is to educate these people, um, get them out of Denver, get them out of D.C., get them to North Dakota, get them on a farm, show them the equipment. The group has hosted the tour for 27 years. This year it was moved from June to September because of the pandemic. I head on Ag Week TV, beef producers say thank you to healthcare workers. You can get the field results you want in varying conditions with the flexibility of the Summers VRT Renegade. Featuring on-the-fly blade angle adjustment from 0 to 19 degrees. And if you want the simplicity of a Super Coulter with the ability to move a little dirt, you'll love the all-new Summers Super Coulter Samurai. 
Go to summersmfg.com or visit your local dealer to learn more about North America's broadest line of tillage equipment and other products from North Dakota-based Summers Manufacturing. Steffes Group, selling land and the equipment to farm it since 1960. If you're interested in selling or have questions about our auction process, head to our website at steffesgroup.com to contact us at any one of our four locations located throughout the Midwest. You can also visit and subscribe to our YouTube channel to view all of our auction previews and recaps to stay up to date on the market in your area. Luckin Trucks and Parts sells quality used parts for all makes and models. With over 50 acres of trucks and parts and new inventory arriving daily. Family owned and operated since 1966, Luckins specializes in the sale of quality used medium to heavy duty truck parts as well as pre-owned trucks, trailers, and construction equipment. If it's on a truck, we got it. Call us today and let us get you your part. If you have a basement waterproofing or structural emergency, Safe Basements North is here to help. Our team of basement repair professionals will find the cause of the problem and work with you to develop a permanent solution. Safe Basements North is following CDC recommendations and is here to help keep your home and family safe. For a free consultation, go to safebasementsnorth.com and take advantage of our 12-month no interest, no payments offer. I'm Jesse Treble and peace of mind is a safe basement. Go beyond the headlines with an Ag Week membership. Get in-depth agribusiness reporting, original farm and ranch stories, and fact-based research for the most comprehensive ag news in the upper Midwest. Experienced ag journalists bring you exclusive ag news, insights, and policy updates you won't find anywhere else. Become a member today and get unlimited access to Ag Week and Ag Week TV. The weather has continued to be favorable for a quick harvest. Will it continue? Here's John with our AgriWeather Outlook. As the general weather pattern continues to evolve this September, a couple of things have really become evident. One, it is a much different September than we had last year. Instead of widespread, tremendous rainfall, it's actually been a fairly dry fall so far. Northern Plains, Upper Midwest, Corn Bean Belt, back through the northern wheat areas, ideal for harvest weather. Uh, more chilly weather is on tap. That's the other thing. We've been seeing a lot of back and forth that have trended to slightly cooler than average throughout most of the agricultural regions of the United States, except, of course, the West, which has not only been burning, but uh, still suffering through uh, just a phenomenal late summer heat wave, and it looks like that will continue. But about the rainfall, I want to take a look here to begin with at this anomaly map. Rainfall anomaly means how different from average it is. So this is a scale where you get into the greens, it's a little wet, the blues are very wet, the brown's a little wet, the red's extremely wet. And this is just for the month of September so far. Northern Plains, down through the Northern Corn Belt, mostly fairly dry. Nothing really exceptionally dry. It's rained in most areas. See a bullseye there in Southern Indiana. And a couple of areas a little wet. Most of this really wet weather that you're seeing down south, that's from tropical activity. So really, it's been a very dry September so far. Going forward, we've got a little bit of a cool snap coming up this weekend. As the jet stream will dive bomb down through the eastern U.S. This is going to send cool weather pretty deep into the Midwest. By cool, this time of year, I'm talking about highs in the 50s, maybe a few highs in the 40s, mostly 50s, some 60s, and nights that might be cool enough for a little bit of frost. So midweek, we're going to see some of that. Some of the Corn Belt will get just scattered light frost, maybe a stray killing freeze, but mostly it won't be too rough. And that cool weather will actually go pretty far south during the week. Meanwhile, what goes up must come down, or the opposite of that. Out west, it remains very warm. Looks like another surge of blast furnace weather with extremely warm weather up as far north as Washington and Oregon. As we go into the first full week of October, I think things will even up a little bit. That is to say, the cool won't be quite as cool, the warm not quite as warm, but the general pattern shape will continue about the same. The rainfall pattern in this particular uh, next two weeks, it's a very simple forecast, really. Maybe not bone dry, 
but mostly so. Over this week uh, through October 3rd through Saturday, I expect little to no significant, maybe a few hundredths of an inch here and there, but the western two-thirds of the country quite dry. If it's going to be rainy, it's going to be in the eastern part. And as we go into the second week here, which would be the first full week of October, that doesn't change very much. Not a lot of rain in the forecast. They say when the going gets tough, the tough get going. At OK Tire, we're here to keep you going. From Firestone tires and replacements to retreads and even Firestone tracks, we have you covered. Our certified Firestone experts are ready to get you back up and running, no matter if you're on site or in the field, saving you time and money. OK Tire, we keep the tough going. We have products that no other companies have. That gives us a bit of an advantage and a bit of an edge and it provides some security to our customer base that we've been here, we're here to stay, and we want to still provide these new innovations to the customers today. It's cold granulated products where we're putting together multiple nutrients. We've got products in our microessentials lineup that contain sulfur and zinc, and we also have products on our potash side, which contain boron, which is a newer product for us, which is called Aspire. Calcine is one of the most effective products at fixing salty, compact soils while reducing irrigation needs. When added to your fields with water, it moves salt out of the root zone, resulting in improved soil structure, better nutrient holding capacity, and less water dependence. Use it in problem areas or in row to improve root systems. Calcine, creating healthier soil to increase crop productivity. To learn more, contact Jim Erickson at ECO. 2020 has started off where 2019 left off with a lot of uncertainty and concern. Is your farming operation ready to take the volatility this year has to offer? Do you have a marketing plan in place to take advantage of opportunity? Are you finding it hard to separate the noise from the news? Talk to the professionals at Martinson Ag. We can help you make sound risk management decisions that will help your operation survive during these unusual times. We're going to talk today about a revolutionary auto steer product that you guys have developed. We back one of these things in, it'll drain a 40 acre patch just within hours. And what can you tell us about what dairy farmers do to make sure that their animals are happy? Their care is our primary concern. Is there still time for producers to get storage bins up? Absolutely. We still can definitely get something up and ready for corn harvest. Every year, three groups representing North Dakota cattle producers honor members of the military with a free beef meal. But as Jenny Schlecht reports, because of the pandemic this year, they honored a different group. Most years, North Dakota cattle groups team up to honor the military during the North Dakota State Fair in Minot. But with the State Fair off this year, they took their efforts a different direction. So we, we value those that are willing to step up and uh, to serve on the front lines, whether it's overseas or whether it's here at home. So it's, uh, it's a great way for us just to give back to them. Dozens of masked men and women from the North Dakota Stockmen's Association, the Beef Commission, and the North Dakota Cattle Women worked feverishly to prepare and serve packaged meals earlier this month. They were for health care workers, the ones they call the real superheroes. It's our way as beef producers and ranchers to show our appreciation and respect for those in the health services and the EMS world. It's usually a sit-down meal at the state fair. But this year, it was more of a drive through or delivery restaurant because of the pandemic. In addition to thanking workers, Dvorak says it's a good way to get the message out to doctors, nurses, dietitians, and other healthcare workers about the health benefits of beef. In Bismarck, this is Jenny Schlecht for Ag Week. A St. Paul, Minnesota brewery has teamed up with U of M to create the Organic Brewers Alliance. It's an effort to create a network of brewers and farmers who use sustainable and organic practices. Jay and Sandy Boss Fabo opened Bang Brewing in St. Paul in 2013. It was the first 100% organic brewery in the Midwest. But they found it was challenging to source enough organic ingredients. They had some extra time when their tap room closed during the pandemic, so they teamed up with U of M students who were unable to work in the field to organize the alliance. There are farmers that are working organically and producing ingredients that we could use. We just don't have a way to connect. Establishing that network is something that 
we recognized would have a lot of value for both farmers and for brewers. The Alliance is working on a website for farmers and brewers to search for resources around the country. Still ahead on Ag Week TV, how coronavirus is affecting high school rodeo. North Star Ag is proud to add some exciting new products to their lineup this summer, including Meyer Manufacturing Forage Boxes, Meyer's Equipment Manure Spreaders, H&S Beet Carts, and Summers Manufacturing Land Rollers and Tillage. This August, North Star Ag will be moving to a convenient new location just off I-94 in Tower City, North Dakota. We look forward to seeing you there. Keep your equipment in the field when you need it most with parts from Titan Machinery. We carry a full line of high quality Case IH parts designed for optimal performance and durability. We also carry alternative parts options at lower price points with rugged designs for a great mix of affordability and performance to fit a wide variety of makes and models. Contact your local Titan Machinery location today or shop online at www.titanmachinery.com. Titan Machinery, your local Case IH parts leader. Egg Week brings you timely agriculture news from field to fork in digital, print, and television. Fresh every week, join Jenny Schlecht from the Egg Week editorial team and me, Al Windmill, from the sales and marketing team for a deeper dive into farm and ranch stories along with guest interviews with personalities from the world of agriculture. If you're involved in farming, ranching, or agribusiness, the Egg Week podcast is the show for you. I'm Jenny Garth. And as a mother of three, I know kids worry about a lot of things. Getting enough food to eat shouldn't be one of them. But here in America, that is a real worry for one in five children. Even though we are one of the most food-rich countries in the world, 15 million children don't know where their next meal is coming from. This is unacceptable and something the Feeding America nationwide network of food banks is working to solve. Instead of accepting that our country lets billions of pounds of surplus food go to waste every year, Feeding America has made it their mission to help families in need by rescuing this food. Through food pantries and meal programs, the nationwide network of food banks provides more than 3 billion meals, serving virtually every community in the United States, including yours. Join me in supporting Feeding America and your local food bank by visiting feedingamerica.org. Together, we can solve hunger. Together, we're Feeding America. The pandemic has forced a lot of events and activities to be canceled or postponed, but North Dakota High School Rodeo is going on. Although last spring's season was canceled, it resumed in the fall, and this was the last rodeo event of the fall season. Students competed in 10 events at the North Dakota Winter Show Building and Grounds in Valley City. Show manager Tessa Klein says it's perfect for social distancing. There are some that uh, had to stay home that maybe have been exposed to it and so they stay home so nobody else has to get quarantined or anything. And if you can't social distance in this building, I don't think you can do it anywhere. The top 24 finishers in 12 events will go on to compete at the state and then the top four in each event go on to nationals. Thanks for watching this week's edition of Ag Week TV. Remember, for all your ag news, go to agweek.com and you can follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Have yourself a great and safe week.